Hi, today we are having Mr. Hamdisha from Al-Rahba Hospital, Abu Dhabi. He is having more than 20 years of experience in biomedical field and he is very well active in social media platform with biomedical, different biomedical updates as well. Welcome sir, thank you for joining me today. Can you please uh, start with a brief introduction about yourself? Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Satam, for giving me such an opportunity to have a live chat with you. And I do truly appreciate all your effort as well, you know, to, to give so many um, updates in, through your uh, um, uh, social media profiles and uh, definitely it, it's helping a lot of people especially your biomedical job portal which you are uh, very keenly following following up with different um, uh, recruiters around the world to link biomedical people around and it's truly appreciate thank you and uh, with regards to my profile uh, currently i am in abu dhabi for the last two decades and I'm here in uh, al Rabah Hospital at the moment, uh, working as senior biomedical engineer for the last two years. Over the 20 years, I, I know that you have worked in different hospitals and I think you started your career as a uh, biomedical guest lecturer. So can you brief tell me about your career journey? Um, uh, I would rather say I came to biomedical field uh, all of a sudden. Because I, you know, like when I joined for diploma in biomedical engineering in 1997, I, I had just completed my bachelor's in commerce. Okay. And uh, I don't really know why that kind of flip flop, you know, like uh, I, I, I was doing, you know, during my pre degree, people used to call it plus two. Okay. I, I had science subject later, due to some reason, I went for. Master of Commerce. After completing it, I came back to engineering field. Luckily, it was to biomedical engineering field. Okay. Uh, immediately after completing it in 2000, year 2000, I got a chance to work with one of the uh, government the polytechnic in Kerala as a guest lecturer. And I worked there hardly for uh, eight months. And it was a wonderful journey. Uh, I got uh, a great opportunity to interact with uh, uh, students so freely uh, my age and some of them are even elder than me uh, during those days and uh, I could I could see most of them are in different uh, heights of biomedical some of them are running companies in high levels in different part of the world some of them are uh, PhD holders right now uh, teaching in uh, different colleges and many of them are in the hospital field. So I'm really honored and happy uh, to begin my career in biomedical engineering as a guest lecturer. Then later in the year 2001, I came in UAE and started my journey as a clinical engineer uh, here in UAE since April 2001. Okay. So over the years, which are the hospital you worked with? Um, uh, in 2001, April, I came here on visit visa, like many of us, many of uh, our youngsters also do. During those days, it was not big challenges to get a job because, uh, for, for example, in my case, I came, for, I came on April 4th of 2001 and on April 10th, I joined in a hospital as a biomedical engineer. So that you see it was. Okay. Uh, and, uh, the first uh, uh, four months, four years of my career in UAE was uh, through a contracting private company who do maintenance of medical devices in the government sector. And that company is no longer uh, available in UAE. Uh, first, uh, my first assignment was in uh, Aljimi Hospital Alley. Okay. Uh, it is usually called Alain Hospital. I worked there around the one and a half years. Then later, as an internal transfer, they have moved me to Mafra Hospital. The same hospital also was being maintained by the same company. So uh, there I spent around two, and two, two years more. So total four years I worked in this company and that company, but in two different hospitals. Both the hospitals were owned by government sector. Mm -hmm. And after that, I have moved to uh, uh, Abu Dhabi National Oil Company uh, Hospital for their medical service division and where I worked around uh, 14 years. 
And from there, I have moved back to SEHA. SEHA is the uh, government uh, healthcare sector. Uh, it is generally called as SEHA. Uh, so moved to SEHA owned hospital, which is called SKMC, Sheikh Khalifa Medical City Hospital in Abu Dhabi. Mm -hmm. Uh, in year 2019, I have moved to Mafra. I'm in Tahaba Hospital. Currently, I'm doing uh, uh, my service in both hospitals, in, in um, Tahaba Hospital and also in Mafra Hospital, which is recently reopened mm. for the uh, treatment of COVID patients. Okay. okay. So, this is my journey in brief. Yeah, I know. So you have a, a long experience. So how do you feel the difference before 10 years and after, you know, currently you, we are in 2021. So what are the changes you have observed in this uh, biomedical field over the years? Uh, uh, Sata, in fact, you know, as you know that our field is quite vast in nature, not limited to the scope of biomedical engineers working in the hospital as clinical engineers. We do have a lot of other uh, sectors as well, like uh, engineers working in the field and they, they, they do maintain certain selected equipment which they are trained on, like field service engineers and uh, application specialists, design engineers. Apart from that, we are one of the part of it. Uh, you know, as, as, you know, like uh, if you consider the total, total useful life, lifespan of an equipment, we are very closely related to the end users. It is also our hospital uh, staff, clinical users of the equipment. That's why my knowledge, my know-how are mostly into the clinical engineering aspect of biomedical engineering. So where uh, if I would say, um, for example, if you see the technological advancement happened in our day-to-day -day, uh, affairs, including mobile phone networking and also the popularity of technology uh, in common man's life, household items, televisions, all these items has been uh, drastically changed over the last one decade. Mm -hmm. Apparently, a similar growth or even more happened in, in biomedical field also. Daily or day by day, there are researches happening and immediately that research comes as a product. All right. Either as it's coming as a product, a new product, or it comes as an enhancement of the existing one. Okay. Some new features are being added. That's why earlier when we used to purchase new technology or new equipment as a replacement plan or as an addition uh, of the existing um, medical technology due to any service improvement of the hospital, we were putting the lifespan of the equipment as minimum 10 to 12 years, you know, in order to uh, compensate that in terms of revenue as well, to bring the revenue. So if you spend, say, about $1 million for a medical technology to be added to a hospital, you are putting the return on investment for a span of nearly 5 to 10 years. And after that, you will be disposing the equipment because that equipment already had done its purpose in terms of services as well as uh, revenue. But here we have for last 10 years or 12 years, we have a greater challenge that in two, three years, the, the technology itself is getting obsolete. There's new thing coming up. So that is a greater challenge which we are facing now. The, the abrupt changes and enhancement in the technology uh, leads to such a complication that which one we have to buy? Are we anticipating the the, the uh, while 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 doing the uh, uh, as need assessment of a technology? We do think a lot. We do take care a lot of aspect. We have to do many researches. We have to consult plenty of times with the end user who requested. Uh, to see uh, will they be satisfied with this technology for coming for at least five years. Otherwise, there will be new technology coming up. There will be new addition or features are being added. That kind, that much fast it is. Yeah, so right. we can't compare with the olden technology with the fast evolving sector of medical technology at the moment. This is yeah. my experience. Yeah, I understood. That's great. And uh, one more thing, uh, I'm sure we have worked in different hospitals and you would have different interview experience as well. So what are the uh, any memorable experience you are having? 
Mm. I have a lot, uh, to be honest with you, because uh, uh, in the you know like I, I started everything in UAE. So far, I have worked only in the government sector hospital, either through a contractor or direct staff of government. Uh, in my entire career of 20 years of experience in UAE, only four years I have worked through a contractor, but later all the remaining 16 years till till now I'm working as a direct employee of the government uh, uh, sector. Uh, that's the reason why I got a lot of chances to interact with many prestigious um, projects in this country. Uh, so if you ask me to list out, I don't want to say many because all of the projects are, you know, like uh, giving added value to us, towards your uh, experience and your abilities. But I want to emphasize one of it uh, as part of preparing the first nuclear power plant in UAE. Uh, when I was working in Ruiz, you know, uh, with that NOC, our hospital, the Ruiz Hospital was uh, assigned as the first uh, responder in case of any casualties. If anything goes wrong with the nuclear power plant, which is hardly 40 kilometers away from our hospital, our hospital will be the first responder. So in order to prepare for that, our hospital also had some tremendous requirement to be met as per the international standards. So I was one of the team member to, 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 con to, to transform our requirement based on their needs, you know, so to, to change new addition, which we have to run an extra mile to get it. So apart from biomedical scope, uh, we got a chance to work closely with the International Nuclear Authority and also the, the nuclear plant over there. And uh, uh, we have designed a few mobile decontamination units. During those days, it was first of its kind, and it was designed. We, I, I was one of the design engineer in, in that project. And uh, it was man, uh, designed by us and manufactured in UAE, sorry, in USA, Detroit. We had to fly plenty of times there and stay there to watch, monitor the quality of that product, which was a container converted into a mobile decontamination unit for the nuclear exposure, uh, uh, you know, exposure and to, to uh, decontaminate uh, persons. And that was one of my great experience in this field. Okay, that's really nice. And over the years, I could see you started your career as a, uh, in biomedical dip diploma, you started your uh, career. And later, I could see you have done your MBA and also BTEC. So how do you feel the importance of uh, the qualification over long run in biomedical field? Uh, it's a very good question and very relevant also because uh, uh, to, to add enough academic background and uh, uh, abilities towards your uh, uh, your capabilities and your CV, uh, it is very much needed. In addition to that, it will give you much uh, self-esteem, you know, like uh, uh, for me, directly, it didn't, uh, didn't uh, add many values to my profile because I have already established my own space in this uh, sector uh, with my own hard work. Uh, the, but still, I have done it for my, my you know, interest. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I did my MBA during the period 2016 to 18 from uh, University of Liverpool and at uh, the same time I have started for the BTEC as well uh, in uh, Pitspilani. Okay. But definitely uh, for any any uh, professionals with uh, uh, having only a diploma must go for uh, a bachelor's uh, and uh, that will help you a lot uh, okay. to, to, to market yourself. Uh, in addition to that, uh, you will have a better chance for uh, a profile growth, a career growth, as well as um, monetary benefit as well. Okay? Yeah, th thank you for adding that. And I know that you have worked with uh, uh, different engineers and from different locations, and I, I, you may have also visited different countries. How is that experience? Uh, well, See, uh, as you know that UAE, UAE is a country uh, where um, people of more than 
200 nationalities live here as residents and also they work here. So to work with multinational uh, professionals, it's not a big thing over here, but still, um, uh, like, you know, it will help a lot, you know, like you will get a perspective from different part of the world, how a German uh, look into the technology, uh, how an Indian, uh, he, mostly we are considered, uh, considered as a consumable, sorry, a, a consumer country, you know, where uh, till, uh, until last couple of years, we were not producing much, but recently, yes, there are companies who is manufacturing, but we are not into the global market yet. Uh, Indian products are still within India. You know they are they are not much exported, uh, but still you know to get exposure with the uh, foreigners and also different nationalities helps uh, to to gain our knowledge, especially with uh, Western doctors. When you work with their approach is totally different than even uh, I, I would rather say it is even better than us. You know they, they are well updated. They know what exactly happening in the technology technology field. What's going to come in the uh, as a next generation of a particular piece of equipment. So uh, when we discuss with them while doing the budgeting or or while uh, sitting for need a, need assessment for a technology, uh, we used to learn a lot. So really, uh, to work with the different nationalities will uh, will add values to our approach to the uh, technology. Yeah, that's good. And one more thing, I have worked around uh, as a part of internship and training in different hospitals and you have also worked in, I think, four to five hospitals. So I have seen even there are hospitals where uh, biomedical people are asked to carry biomedical equipment. So in your perspective, what should be a uh, best biomedical department or how it should be? This is a question which will give a lot of uh, uh, you know, things to discuss, actually. In different hospitals, the department is being managed in different ways. Okay. Although the core aim is uh, to bring the optimum usage of medical te technology and make the uptime of equipment at the maximum with minimum expenditure. This is the aim of any biomedical department. You have to give, you have to support the medical technology with minimum expenditure. This is the core aim. So, but doesn't mean that you have to compromise many, many uh, factors to reduce the cost, no. But there are some aspects which you have to keep in mind. Uh, especially when it comes to the, the medical technology management in a hospital. Um, the main thing is, how do you manage the, the devices there? Are you doing it through in-house team by your own? So if it is an in-house team, you will have your own employees, maybe say about 10 to 15 people working as the hospital staff. Okay, including the biomedical manager, technician, senior. So you have a hierarchy as part of the hospital employees. This is the uh, least, um, uh, I, would, I would say this will be the most economical way of maintaining medical equipment in the hospital, having in-house team. But there are challenges that, you know, you cannot have a trained engineer for each piece of equipment. Right. CT, you can't maintain by yourself. And maybe anesthesia machines, you yeah. must have trained engineers. So that will be the challenge. Yeah, the other thing is, you know, you have to give the entire thing. Of, yeah, uh, you have to give the entire equipment uh, uh, for a contractor. They will maintain and you pay a lump sum amount yearly. And they will, it is their responsibility to maintain A to Z of the medical technology out there. That is one of the expensive way of maintaining it. While one or two staff sitting here to monitor their work. This is what I do here. Hmm. And the third part is, you know, like a, a blend, a blend of all these two. You have certain number of people as in house, and some equipment, major equipment, you give for the uh, the particular uh, company uh, to maintain using their uh, trained engineers. And you don't have a permanent contract for set of equipment, say about 200, 300 equipment in the inventory. No contract you maintain, and assignment required. 
you will make a uh, time and uh, material uh, contract you know like oh, you call them they will come and fix it in that way okay in my opinion a hospital having a blend of all these three uh, will perform better with uh, a, uh, with a, a reasonable amount of expenditure this is what i i believe but i never have seen any such hospital biomedical working in that in that aspect either in india or here okay and there is also uh, the importance of quality in biomedical department uh, we know nabh in india and global level we, we have jsa accreditation so how do you look into that very good question see i'll tell you the quality is not something which which you have to do for an instant or for a day or for a month quality is an ongoing process which any workforce must have and there should be some set of standards you have to follow that is not for not for one day or two that is a continuous process so quality must be there how you implement quality on what basis you do quality work and what all the things you have to keep in mind while you deliver your services this is very important so in order to comply with such qualities such uh, requirement um uh, in india there is something uh, in uh, in internationally uh, worldwide uh, accepted jci is there but i want to add one more thing in that in uae since beginning of my career what i have seen is there is an authority which is looking closely towards the operation of the entire hospital activities uh, especially in abu dhabi earlier it was called health authority of abu dhabi had recently it has been renamed to doh department of health what they do every year they come and inspect the operation of each and every hospital and give a license for a year to operate okay. for example if they come here in this month of 10 to 2 to 3 days to uh, do audit for this hospital they will go each and every corner of the hospital they will there will be a biomedical engineer in that team they will come and uh, they verify all our, our previous work there they will verify our workflow they will see the competency of all the staff so the, they have set of requirement they they check okay what i what i am aiming to say is the environment where i am working it is the, the quality is an ongoing process which is mandatory okay so without the yearly renewal you cannot run the hospital in the hosp- in, in this country in this uh, sector of uh, uh, uae so we can so compromise the quality right every year there is yeah so you have to go along with the quality work otherwise your license will be cancelled so jsa in order to in order for us to get the jsa it was not a greater challenge because we are already practicing it as our routine our routine activity okay good and uh, the next question will be uh, for the long time i think i know you have attended different interviews but right now you will be conducting interviews to recruit different biomedical engineers so how you are uh, seeing different biomedical engineers whether they are meeting your requirement uh, how's their quality how do you feel or how your biomedical engineer should be when they are looking for a job in uae uh, again it is very easy for us to to do that because you know as per the i'm talking about the uh, government sector hospital in in uae especially in abu dhabi okay. because that's where i work that's where i have experience so when you come to uh, in that sector uh, our uh, there is a benchmark there is certain requirement which you ha- any candidate must process that they should have minimum uh, at least of uh, four to five years experience in the relevant field and having a bachelor's degree in biomedical engineering or three year diploma this is mandatory okay. so whoever doesn't have that hospital experience of minimum 3 to 4 years they cannot even apply even if they apply we will not accept so that benchmark itself will give us a lot of room to segregate uh, the people so we don't entertain people doesn't have uh, previous experience in the hospital that can be anywhere not necessarily to be in gcc or in uae it can be from india or us or anywhere in the world so we segregate in that way so the shortlisting will be very easy after that we go for face to face interview during interview you know every interviewer every recruiter has have their own um, way of in, uh, approaching to to read the people 
right but the good part for me nowadays is you know like uh, due to my social media activities for past uh, two years yeah. i have made my own uh, a large uh, network around uh, uh, um, engineers biomedical engineers around the globe so that's why mm. whenever i get a cv uh, some somehow or other i know this person yeah okay uh, either so it make easy Facebook for you or for through linkedin yeah yeah it, it it is really easy and again um, i i i i used to get a feedback about this particular guy uh, if i don't know him directly i just do a few phone calls and uh, i know a to z about him before he come in front of me yeah so it is easy really easy for me to interview and select people yeah one more thing i need to ask about this in a different countries nowadays i could see different exams so is there any specific exam we have to write you are talking about uh, uae government yeah. ah uh, yeah generally maybe gcc i think saudi arabia having uh, uh, some mandatory exam i'm not sure about i'm just asking a general question if you know ah uh, okay uh, uh for me uh if you are talk if you want to know about uae <laughs> they were saying in 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 uh, in uh, since long time that they are going to implement this kind of license requirement for biomedical engineers but so far it is not yet uh, established anyone uh, successfully passed the interview are eligible to work in a hospital but to work in any of the abu dhabi government sector hospitals they have to go undergo two things first thing is the written exam which is uh, uh, a, a mix of technical and clinical uh, aspect of questions and after that they have to go for the interview so this is the requirement to be uh, uh, get appointed as a biomedical engineer to a contractor or direct staff in the government sector but in the private sector it is as usual they do uh, check the competency of the people based on their uh, okay. abilities and the academic profile with with uh, their experience but if i heard that you know like in saudi arabia to work as an engineer there are certain requirements yeah. but it is not limited to the biomedical engineers but the entire engineers they must have listed in some engineers association or some some kind of things are required okay. but when you go to usa uh, to work as a clinical engineer uh, i heard that you know you um, a clinical engineer or biomedical technician it is preferable to have cbat mm-hmm. uh, from ami or oh, cstm if you have you can work as a clinical engineering manager it's about you say so But we can do it as distant have... this uh, cbet and all we can do as as a distant course is it possible actually cbet is an exam okay oh, it, is exam. A, it is a, uh, it is an exam conducted on, through online <laughs> if you register and the eligibility criteria is clearly mentioned in the website of ami uh i have done it in 2014 i think okay. so this one it's nearly 120 150 questions you have to answer it in 2 hours okay. and uh, the minimum requirement is 100 you need to get at least 110 correct all uh, objective type questions you know like uh, through authorized uh, um, uh, exam partners you know there will be centers available and you can choose the nearby center you do it so this is how the exam is conducted and uh, really you um, know uh, like even though you are not not uh, interested or looking for a job in usa still to have cbet or cstm will add lot of values Yeah. uh in your profile and uh, i recommend if somebody wish to have it you know uh, it's a great choice yeah that would be great yeah again uh, when anybody is going to uh, you know looking for a job in abroad of course salary is the major part so what is the average salary we can expect when we are looking for a job in gcc just a rough estimate would be enough very difficult to answer very very difficult <laughs> to answer because uh, you know why there are so many things you have to count there are private sector hospitals there are government sector hospitals there are uae nationals they have different scale and expatriates different scale and senior staff it is different and it is and contractors it is different so as an average in biomedical engineering field in hospitals you can say a person having 10 years and above experience and if you have your experience you can expect from 
10,000 to 12,000 dirhams as salary and our age. But most of the people nowadays, they are not getting that much because they are coming from uh, India directly or from other countries. And uh, the companies who recruit them, they negotiate well to bring them for a lower salary. And compared to the salary, what they get in India or other country will be much higher uh, when you say about they, they are forced to accept 7,000. Sometimes they do. So that's why... Uh, it is very difficult question for me to answer. But there are people uh, getting nearly 40,000 dirham also as salary. Okay. Uh, and uh, we, as SEHA staff, we are also getting well paid here. Okay. And one more thing, uh, there are many companies uh, paying very less also, you mentioned. So what is the minimum salary we should accept if we are going for GCC? See, it should be affordable as well, right? Yeah, so basically, I would say don't accept anything less than 3,500 or 4,000 grams. Okay. You might be having four years or three years of experience already. Uh, in Oman, there are people uh, bulk, uh, recruiting in bulk and giving them uh, nearly 300 Omani real, which is equivalent to 3,000 grams and even less nowadays. Mm -hmm. But the, the cost of living in Oman is comparatively less than UAE. If you want to work in UAE, don't accept anything less than 4,000 or 3,500 uh, okay. if you are a bachelor. But if you are having family, don't think of coming here uh, with that salary even and it will never meet your requirements for meeting your family needs and to, if you are even staying here bachelor, you have a lot of uh, expenditure. So make sure you get at least a reasonable salary. Uh, if you have family, don't come anything less than 6,000 dirhams. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's a good uh, point. And one more thing, I could see many people are sharing nowadays fake job offers. Even yesterday, I got a query regarding whether it's actual offer or a fake offer. So have you ever come across any such queries or any questions? Every month I am getting four or five or maybe nearly 10 queries from different people of my contact asking me, I got this straight away. They are showing me the uh, copy of job offer and everything is fake. So uh, this is one of the things which, you know, like there's no other way to verify. Uh, the only possible thing is to, to contact your uh, friends or relatives working in, in that country and check. Let them call, let them research. And don't, don't see, I'll tell you one more thing. No company will give you a job offer without interviewing you. Right. This is the basic, basic uh, common sense you should have. Yeah. Nobody in the world will give you a job offer without interviewing you. Especially you are a skilled labor and they must know your capabilities. Right. Okay, maybe for, for example, they might they might have seen your CV somewhere, now three or anywhere. Yeah. That doesn't mean that they know you well. Mm -hmm. They have to interview you directly to give you an offer. So if you never had attended an interview with the, the person who offered you, it is fake. That's it. As and, as that. and I just want to add one of the recent experience I had one person forward me an offer letter. That was a hospital based in Dubai. I checked their website also. And unfortunately, I could see the HR manager details also exactly as in the website. So, but one point I could easily point out is the mail ID they shared the offer letter. It is purely from a personal mail ID that we can easily find out. And it's not from the official mail ID. So I, that's why I usually ask people to check the mail ID from where to send, whether it's the official mail ID, all those kind of things. Any such experience to you? Yes, yes, yes. See, so many people, they come. And even I, I, I have seen a more serious crime that some people make made fake website for a, an existing hospital here. Oh, that's... And in this website, they have mentioned the email ID uh, which they have used for communication. See the extent of crime, yeah, exactly. the extent of cheating. Exactly. So you and people are, you, you know, like if you are desperately looking for a job and all of a sudden you find a wow oh, oh, offer in your email, email, you look into the website and it is also correct. Definitely, you will be going to the next step to pay him. Yes. So to 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 to, to shortcut all these, think have 
you ever attended an interview with this employer or not or not if not don't accept it is a it is a kind of fraud no one in the world no one in the world especially for a skilled labor will give offer letter without conducting the interview nowadays conducting interviews as simple as that over telephone or um, zoom or anything you can conduct an interview yeah. so don't accept don't 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 send even one dirham one rupees to any such people uh, if you are not interviewed by them exactly okay yeah, yeah. and the cheaters might interview also sometimes <laughs> okay <That's> fantastic <laughs> <laughs> so so ask, ask ask your contacts ask your contacts the credibility of the offer the credibility of the uh, organization if possible find out the contact number speak to hr don't give them money okay yeah it is cheating uh, yeah and one more thing there are many people are looking for to uh, even you visited as a uh, you know visit visa in dubai if i'm right for the first time so what is the present situation is there any possibility if i'm visiting as a, a visiting visa is there any possibilities to get a job or how do you recommend people see if you if somebody is seriously looking for a job in uae or in in, in gulf countries especially in uae and you feel that i i i am ready to take a chance better come come here on visit visa and try because there are some requirement which comes quite often for looking for people in uh, very urgently if you are already available in uae we'll get an especially at this time of corona you know like in last one year it was a great challenge to get people because of a lot of travel restrictions and those who are having uh, already available in uae got uh, better placements uh even uh, people having less than 2 year experience also got placements because Uh, of the lack of um, available manpower okay okay uh, so then yeah i just want to add one more question once uh, if we are if we are visiting uh, by visiting visa what are the opportunities we are having uh, currently you are working in government sector maybe in private section also companies what are the different possibilities possibilities are like not only the hospitals there are plenty of medical companies around this country uh so you will be having uh, opportunities as uh, sales and service engineers um field support engineers and uh, calibration companies hospitals so uh, if you sit in india and uh, search for op- uh, openings and if you do the pre- the old strategy of sending email to the hr of every company every hospital it won't work nowadays if a company really want people they do really uh, advertise it they do spread the news and they get uh, plenty of cvs and they prefer people who are already available in uae so in that case better be here but if you are a well experienced person having more than 10 years of experience and you are uh, holding a good position in your current company uh, either in india or in any, any part of the world don't come here on visit visa stay where you are do your work and keep through your contacts you know, the share your cv with your known contacts and uh, um, uh, tell them that i'm looking for a better opportunity and if anything come come, come across just uh, refer me or let me know okay if you are a junior level engineer having only two or three year experience then you can come here in visit visa and try for it is it is okay that you come here for uh, looking for job but if you are yeah. senior level don't overcome on visit visa here okay. try from where you are sitting and using your contacts you can just uh, keep looking into the market globally and um, uh, apply for it okay so we are all going through this covid 19 situation and this global pandemic so what was the changes in the biomedical department or in the responsibilities you are having the oh it is a lot it is a lot for me especially because uh, um, uh, people who are here they might be knowing you know like uh, mafrak arhaba hospital and mafrak they it became the epic center for receiving covid patients and uh, seha already have conduct uh, made lot of field hospital so our responsibility drastically increased for sourcing critical care equipment and equipment uh, for the 
covid treatment uh, apparently the same same uh, workload increase had been happened for mostly all the hospitals uh, for tackling uh, uh, the covid scenario uh, biomedical engineers also uh, had to work a lot uh, the greater challenge during 2019 uh, sorry 2020 was getting medical technology for the near because of the travel restrictions the global demand drastically increased and the availability was a greater challenge uh, so to get required medical equipment uh, for uh, the increased demand was one of the biggest challenge in addition to that you know like the practice of maintaining medical device so so had a lot of new policies has to be implemented decontamination of the equipment uh, reached in different levels you have to be very careful while entering the patient occupied areas so many things so many things now i think it is going to be a permanent practice for entire biomedical world uh, to have a safe more safe uh, to create a more safe working environment towards the maintenance of medical technology so yes. the, this last one year has changed bring up lot of changes in our field yes yeah and again uh, this covid 19 i have seen as an opportunity as well for biomedical engineers lots of recognition for biomedical department even in newspapers the role of biomedical engineers uh, what's your thought about that i do agree with you uh, like uh, we are one of the sector where uh, in terms of uh, job market it became an opportunity because uh, uh in uh, if you see the 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 bulk of medical equipment being pumped in different part of the world manufacturing uh, capacities of the production plant were doubled in many of the scenarios and those were directly put towards the world to to meet the requirement and you know this uh, is not like buying a household item it is a medical device which has a very good uh, uh, life span Uh, so in terms of maintaining the newly uh, introduced medical equipment bulk in number in the coming future the coming future there will be demand for biomedical engineers also will be apparently increased to maintain that additional equipment which is being introduced to the market no. uh, in addition to that uh, this covid had taught the world the importance of medical sector those who were ignorant those who were careless those who were not spending money on medical technology really real, realized that how difficult it was for them to tackle this scenario now people will be uh, spending more time and spending more money and spending more effort to maintain the requirement and also to uh meet the well being of the mankind so definitely uh as we as we are part of the the the, the healthcare sector our importance also will be increased along with the increased uh, demand of medical sector yeah right and i am sure it will be watching by biomedical engineering students and also freshers so what are the advice you are having to them for the freshers and students uh you have to think very wisely if you, you if you have already taken decided to work in biomedical field while studying you should be very much determinant about your future if you should know when which sector of biomedical you are most fit into biomedical engineering is not about working in a hospital biomedical engineering is not only about working in a field uh, as a civil service engineer for a particular product biomedical engineering is not only about working as a uh, teacher in a college biomedical engineering is not limited to work as a design engineer or a production engineer so if you see you have vast area of selection which you have to uh, um, decide which matching your uh, interest be very focused while you are as a student before you reach into the final sem you must know the, the the software solution for biomedical is my field or the embedded software solution designing application this so if you are that much talented enough to work in a design field 
be with that or if you are passion is to work in a hospital as a clinical engineer be with that or if you are working in a sales engineer so this kind of segregation which area to be selected you have to decide by yourself based on your abilities and the nature of uh, uh, your thoughts yes right and Once i just want to yeah i just want to add one, one yeah one please come. Thing, let me come yeah <laughs> Uh, uh like once you have completed with uh, without any such idea for example you already passed out last year and you didn't you never had such a guidance what to take where to go and what to do and where to start you are totally blank in that case even it is not very late and to go for a design engineer it is too late uh, maybe it will be very difficult you have two options or three options either go for sales or for service or for the hospital in if that is the case never ever if you are if if, if your interest is to work in a hospital never ever think of getting salary for first one year and up to 3 or 4 year of hard work you will be getting minimal amount of salary think that it is part of your uh, studies don't you may be having lot of financial problems doesn't mean that you'll get a good uh, remuneration right from the beginning so at least four years you have to struggle to get a better pay so keep in mind biomedical engineering is not a field where you can get a good salary right from the beginning you have to grow you have to grow you have to grow very steadily yeah this is the last point you said exactly what i want to mention even there are many biomedical graduates used to even call me or personally message me where i will get job and that uh, the sad part is it is after completing the course in my perspective in my perspective it should be when we are doing the course itself we should have some idea as you mentioned and yes, uh, definitely yeah and i i think it may be watching some of the faculties or teachers as well so what is your suggestion to them even i usually convey my thoughts for example it is mandatory to have some training or industrial exposure along with our academics to know what's happening in the industry so it won't be a, a new field when we once we are completing the course can you make it more clear yeah yeah the thing is you know many uh, faculties I, i have seen in some colleges uh, some trainings are well promoted or maybe uh, industrial exposure many students are getting so the importance of having the training along with our course maybe get in touch with industrial people or getting a industrial exposure so about that what's your uh, thoughts it is always good to have such exposure but you know like uh, you should have that uh, uh, drive within you uh, somebody should you know, the, the the teachers in the college must take this initiative uh, to have such hospital visits to get uh, to bring people from different aspect of the industry to interact with the students uh, also the teachers the teachers must go go to attend uh, seminars if possible they have to go and attend arab health and medica in germany this will add lot of values to your vision this will bring lot of ideas to your thoughts this will bring a lot of uh, improvement in their teaching methodology and to share ideas so a teacher in biomedical field doesn't mean that he is a simply a lecturer teaching what is written in the book he should know what's happening around uh, our uh, around him in our in, in our field so what i do as a biomedical engineer in the hospital uh to enhance my uh, knowledge i used to attend a lot of trainings as much as possible i should i will be attending a lot of seminars i go for uh, exhibitions such ex- exhibitions anybody can attend if you are a college teacher you go, just go and attend it it will add a lot of values for yourself and also for the kids yes. if i get a chance if i am free i am very happy to go to any college at any number of time to interact with them and i am really happy for that okay. if somebody wish to 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 have me uh, an interaction with their kids you are always welcome i am happy to do that yeah, if i am in india i am willing to go for there to interact with the people 
of course that's really a good thing that you can do anyway i think we have covered almost all the aspect of uh, biomedical engineering in uh, the maybe based on the opportunities in gcc or what biomedical engineers can do to get a job in gcc and also the suggestion to the biomedical engineering student thank you so much for joining me today and spending your valuable time with me thank you so much thank you so much sata to 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 have uh, such a very wonderful uh, session and uh, i have enjoyed a lot uh, hope to meet you when i come to india next time thank of, you so much of course thank you thank you so much